What's up? I got something really exciting to share with you. Actually, well, <laughs> I guess if you read the title of this video, then you already know what the thing that I'm gonna share with you is, and it's the Sony FX30. Literally the day it came out in Canada, I pre-ordered this and it finally got here. So I wanna bring the thing into the field with me, give you my first thoughts using it as a professional sports videographer, show you some test footage and just talk about why I decided to get this camera, even though I already have the camera that I'm filming on right now, the Sony a7 IV. Now, in case you don't know what the FX30 is, the Sony FX30 is Sony's newest and I'm pretty sure cheapest cinema line body, if we're gonna call this thing a cinema camera. It really is more of a mirrorless camera if you actually look at it. But it's Sony's cheapest cinema line body. It just came out. It's essentially a Sony FX3 with a crop sensor. All the ergonomics are exactly the same. It has the flippy screen, just like that. You can add your own LUTs into it. It has the record button on the top and on the front here. The whole thing lights up red when you click record, which I'm already loving. I've been messing around with it just like at home here, getting it set up for the past day or two, and it's been a great time. So I'm really excited to bring this into the field and talk about how I intend on using this in my workflow and see if maybe it's something worth picking up if you're a videographer looking for an upgrade to get into the quote unquote cinema line. So I finished filming with the FX30 just yesterday. I got a lot of good shots. Like I'm just really happy, one, with the way the camera performed, but two, also with the way I shot, I guess. And I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about my first impressions while this is all like still fresh after having used the FX30 for a full football game. So the first thing that I noticed, and maybe this is the first thing I noticed because you just hold it in your hands and you can tell, but the ergonomics on this camera are awesome. There's a ton of function buttons, way more function buttons than I'm used to on a mirrorless camera. One, because it's just more options for buttons that you can customize, like that front record button, which you can make into whatever you want. And also, I don't need to waste a custom function button on a Super 35 mode to automatically punch in, because the FX30 is already just a crop sensor camera all the time. So having more functions available to me, I actually found made me a more efficient shooter. And also kind of in line with the whole ergonomics thing of the FX30. I love that the screen lights up all red and like the entire camera is glowing red when you start recording. There's no accidentally recording and 
stopping your recording and not realizing or reverse recording and missing a shot or something like that. Like if you're recording, the whole thing lights up and you know that you're recording. Whereas on a lot of mirrorless cameras, you just have like a little red dot on the side of the LCD screen and you don't always know. And when I'm in like a loud environment, like a football stadium and I can't hear the beep of the camera start recording, then being able to just look down at my camera and being like, oh yeah, this thing is recording right now. It's really nice. Oh, by the way, pardon me if anything in this setup is distracting. I'm literally just using the light from the window right here. And there's like rolling clouds all day. I just can't be bothered to like set up a bunch of lights right now. I kind of got too many edits going on. So um, yeah, if this looks terrible, sorry. But anyways, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the 4K 120 out of this camera. It looks so nice to have 4K in 120 frames per second in 10 bit color. And the fact that you can get it for like $2,000 is pretty remarkable. Like I don't even know if this is a feature that should be available yet at that price. It seems like I didn't pay enough money to get what I'm getting when I shoot in that profile and that bit rate, like with those settings. And if you showed me that footage that I shot yesterday in 4K at 120 frames per second with 10 bit color and told me you paid like $2,000 for that camera, I probably wouldn't believe you if I didn't know about this camera. So very happy with that. I also love that in 4K 60 10 bit color, which is what I would regularly shoot on with my Sony a7 IV, I'm able to shoot and create internal proxies at the same time. So I can shoot that very high resolution, high quality footage, take it into my editor, immediately plug in proxies that are already made for me and start flying through stuff, even if I'm not on a super powerful machine. So I think that's awesome for people who might not have great editing setups. Maybe you're editing on like an older laptop like I was just a little bit ago before I picked up my Mac Studio and you still wanna edit high quality footage and you wanna do it quickly. Well, shooting 4K 60, 10 bit with internal proxies will let you edit that footage really quickly and make some awesome stuff. And it'll come out looking great like these modern Sony cameras usually do. So that's fantastic. And I'm really happy that they actually incorporated that in there. Another feature that I was loving from the FX30 yesterday and that honestly saved me such a headache was the ability to use built-in LUTs and import your own custom LUTs. I didn't actually import my own custom LUTs yet and I don't even know if I will honestly because they have a Rec. 709 conversion LUT already built into the camera. So I can just turn on their log shooting mode on the FX30 and then shoot in log, but view it on the monitor with a Rec. 709 color grade so I can easily monitor what it looks like literally just by looking at the screen and looking with my eyes and being like, okay, does that look like a decent image? Yes, great, then I'm exposed properly. And then when I spit it back out into my editor, that image is still in log. But the proxies that I make from it, if I do decide to make any proxies while filming in log mode with a LUT applied, are Rec. 709. So when I play back in my editor, I can see that it's exposed properly. When I'm filming, I can see it's exposed properly. But when I go to color grade, I have this beautiful S-Log3 image that lets me push the colors around with as much dynamic range as possible. It's really well thought out. I feel like this is something that should be integrated into more mirrorless cameras, honestly. And like, it's a feature that I'm really thankful for and that I'm going to be using a lot. Also, the FX30 pairs really well with other Sony mirrorless cameras that are like more modern. I was specifically using my Sony a7 IV, which I'm filming on right now. With the FX30, I had this lens that I'm using currently, the 20 mil 1.8 from Sony with the a7 IV, and I had my 70 to 200 millimeter f4 with the FX30. And I was using the a7 IV for gimbal work and the FX30 for game action, since I like shooting football with a 7200 in crop sensor mode so that I can get a little bit more reach and actually film subjects properly on such a big field. And it was a perfect combination. Even editing now, which I've been doing all day, I can take one color grading preset from one camera and just apply it to the other one. And I got two cameras 
that serve two different purposes or two different functionalities that I can pair together seamlessly with little to no effort. It really is a perfect setup for me and considering for the two cameras I paid about as much money as I would have to pay for like an FX6 or something of that nature. But now I have two camera bodies. Pretty much anything that requires a multi-camera setup, I can do it with my two cameras using high quality footage. It's awesome. I had a great time filming with it yesterday. It just made the whole experience more enjoyable. But there were a couple of things about the FX30 that I want to talk about that weren't the most ideal. And the first one is obviously that it's a crop sensor camera. There's no option to punch out to full frame. There were specific instances yesterday where I would have loved to quickly punch out to a full frame sensor, grab a shot at 70 mil full frame, and then punch back in, you know, just in case somebody walks too close to you. You don't have that option with this camera. If someone walks too close to you, you just have to like frame up the shot that you can and deal with it or find a way to quickly move back. And it's not usually that big of an issue for me. And if you're filming a sport where you need to be a little bit closer to the subjects so like basketball or volleyball or you know anything of that nature, it's fine. You just wanna make sure that you're getting something like a 24 to 70. Maybe you can grab like the 35 to 150 from Tamron rather than using a 70 to 200, just so you have that extra wide end on your lens to account for the crop. I also prefer that dial to switch between memory recall settings on the a7 IV, which is actually like a tactical circular dial that I can take my finger on and move, rather than clicking a mode button and then cycling through a menu on the FX30. Especially filming in the cold yesterday, it was zero degrees Celsius, which is like freezing temperature. And I was out there for hours. It would have been really nice to be able to, with my mitt on, just move a switch that I can like feel and has like hard clicking stops rather than have to click a mode button or a menu button or something and then use that little scroll wheel on the back to cycle through which is not really doable with my gloves on so I had to like poke a thumb out and do that if I ever wanted to like switch between memory recall modes and it's harder to access the S and Q modes as well through that menu whereas the a7 IV you can literally just flick from video mode to S and Q mode and then choose the memory recall preset on the same dial. It's really intuitive. I would like to see something like that on all cinema cameras because it's just a really convenient system that I like a lot. I just want the features that are most convenient for me, okay? But I think that the tactical buttons and the switches and things that I can like feel with the hard stops and the clicks, I like that. I don't want to just be jamming buttons all day. I want to just like press a button, turn a knob, and I have myself dialed and then focus on shooting. That's my main goal with every camera and I felt like that menu mode thing to get between memory recall settings like wasn't doing it for me. It gave me one more thing to think about that I would have preferred to not worry about. FX30 was a blast to shoot with and I'm really looking forward to shooting with it this coming week as I head out to shoot the CFL's championship game, the Grey Cup. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis and I would love to have you around for that. Also, if you like the color grade that I put on any of the clips in this video, I did so using my football video LUT pack that is available in the description. You can go check it out. It's on my website, the links will be down there. And if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, you can drop it in the comment section. I'd love to have a discussion with you down there in chat. Anyways, that's gonna be all for this one. So until next time, peace.